Hello. In this video I'm going to talk about how to get a little bit more from your binary logistic regression analysis in SPSS. Although the standard route to carrying out binary logistic regression involves going through the regression menu then to binary logistic, there are other routes where you can obtain logistic regression results that may provide you with additional information and or offer additional flexibility in modeling your data. In this video I discuss these various possibilities. A link for the data as well as this PowerPoint will be made available under the video description and additionally a running document containing links to other videos on logistic regression and using other programs will be made available as well. In this demonstration we will be modeling predictors of individuals expressed intention to donate to a political cause as a function of self-reported gender identification political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy. The dependent variable is coded 0 for do not intend to donate, 1 for intend to donate, and we have a categorical independent variable which is gender identification, but it's already dummy coded um, 0 for identified male, 1 for identified female. Political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy are our continuous predictor variables. So the typical route for carrying out the analysis um, basically involves going through analyze, regression, and then binary logistic right here. And before we do that, let me just kind of reiterate, this is uh, the data opened up in SPSS. We have our donate variable, gender ID variable, political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy. So we'll go through analyze to regression to binary logistic. We'll move donate, our dependent variable, to the dependent box. We'll go ahead and move um, our predictors over to the covariates box. And because gender ID is already dummy coded, we don't really need to use the categorical function, as you see right here. Uh, a couple of options that I typically will, will click on include Hosmer, Leibachow, Goodness of Fit test, and uh, confidence intervals for the odds ratios. So we'll go ahead and click on continue and then on OK and voila we have our output. So let's uh, in, just take a, a few moments to interpret what we have. First, we see that the likelihood ratio chi-square test is statistically significant. So this is the model, uh, this is basically the likelihood ratio chi-square test, and this indicates that our model containing the full set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over a null or intercept-only model. Uh, right here we have the Cox and Snail and Nagelkirke pseudo R-square values. These are treated as rough analogies to the OLS R-square value, but there's not a whole lot of guidance in the literature on using this, but uh, nevertheless, again, you're, you're basically going to treat these as analogies. We have the hosmer show goodness of fit test, which is basically interpreted um, as follows. If, this is, uh, if the test results are indicating um, non-significance, that's actually a, an indicator that the model is a good fit to the data. So using a conventional 0.05 uh, threshold, you see that our model, uh, the hosmer show test, was not statistically significant, which is indicative of a good fitting model. Here we have a classification table, and the percentage correct associated with row 1 is referred to as specificity as it reflects the accuracy of the model in correctly classifying individuals into group 0, that's the non-target group. The percentage associated with row 2 is referred to as sensitivity as it reflects the accuracy of the model in correctly classifying individuals into group 1, that's our target group, basically the intend to donate group. So you can see that the model does a pretty nice job in terms of predicting um, who does not intend to donate but does a, a fairly lousy job in predicting who does intend to donate. Nevertheless, the overall classification accuracy rate is 82.3%. So this table contains our uh, regression coefficient, standard errors, um, test statistics. So the, the, the uh, test that's carried out is the wall test, and one downside of this particular test is that it can be overly conservative, which can lead to an increased type 2 error when it comes to drawing inferences about the population regression slopes. And a more powerful test of the effect of individual predictors would be likelihood ratio tests. Unfortunately, these tests are not available through this route, and I'll show you how to obtain them um, shortly. 
So in the model, political interest was a positive and significant predictor of the likelihood or probability of a person expressing the intention to donate. And before I, I kind of move on on this particular issue, let me just note that the regression slopes are in units of log odds, not uh, probabilities. So when I use the term likelihood or, prob or probability uh, as I'm kind of using it here, I'm using it as sort of a loose sort of loose uh, terminology. Um, so nevertheless a positive coefficient would indicate uh, with increasing scores on the predictor there's increasing probability of being in the target group and a negative coefficient like you see right here basically means that with increasing uh, values on the predictor there's a decreasing probability of being in the target group. So nevertheless uh, we'll move on we'll take a quick look at the odds ratios which are found in the this uh, column right here. So the odds ratio indicates in this case that for every one unit increase on political interest the odds of expressing an intention to donate increased by a factor of 1.94 which is this value right here. Dogmatism was a positive but non-significant predictor of in intention to donate, so there's the coefficient there. You can see we have non-significance. The odds ratio indicates that for every one unit increase on dogmatism, the odds of expressing an intention to donate increased by a factor of 1.409, but again, that was non-significant. External political efficacy was a positive but non-significant predictor as well of predicting the uh, probability of expressing an intention to donate. And the odds ratio that you see right here is indicating that for every one unit increase on external political efficacy, the odds of expressing an intention to donate increase by a factor of 1.524. Gender identification was a negative predictor in the model, but again, it's non-significant. But given the, given the coding of the variable, the negative coefficient would be interpreted, had it been significant, to mean that persons identifying as female are less likely to express the intention to donate than males. And given that the odds ratio that you see right here is less than one, uh, that basically means that the odds for females is uh, less than that of the odds for male. Okay, so now let's take another uh, take a look at another approach for carrying out binary logistic regression, and we can use the generalized linear models route. So basically, if you go to analyze generalized linear models, um, uh, that's basically how you do it. So what I thought I would do um, is kind of walk you through in real time. So I'm going to uh, click out of the uh, PowerPoint and, and then demonstrate it. So now you see we're right back to our data uh, in SPSS. I'm going to go to Analyze Generalized Linear Models. Click on this button right here. And first off, we're going to go over here to where it says Binary Logistic and click that. So make sure that you've clicked under here. And next, what we'll do is we will click on Response. We'll move the Donate variable to the Dependent Variable box. Now you'll notice that this Reference Category box highlights, and this gives you the option of making a choice as to which group you want to serve as your reference category. So given that I'm using zero as my reference category, I'm going to click on first for lowest, lowest value. Next I'll click on continue and then go to predictors and then I'm going to move my predictor variables over to the covariates box as well. As I said before, gender ID is uh, already dummy coded so it's permissible to include it in the covariates box. But if I had a categorical variable that includes uh, more than two groups and is, and is uh, obviously not dummy coded then I would be including it under the factors box and then under options then I could actually specify the reference category there as well. Next we'll click on model and we will highlight um, our variables move them over under estimation you'll notice that we have model based estimator and robust estimator so the default is model based um, if you happen to have outliers that may have an influence on your result, then you might choose the robust estimator. But uh, we're not going to do that in this case. We're just going to stick with model-based. Under statistics, you'll see where it says chi-square. It defaults with the walled chi-square, which you see right here. But if we want to change this and obtain likelihood ratio uh, test statistics then our, uh, our likelihood ratio test and we can click on this button right there and that's what we're going to do for this demonstration. So we'll click on that and then down at the bottom you'll see it says include exponential parameter estimates and that's our way of getting those odds ratios as we did before. So we'll click on OK and so now when we look at our output you can see it looks a little bit different from what we had previously. 
but uh, you'll see we have various um, goodness of fit measures up here. Um, the likelihood ratio test comparing our uh, full model against the null model or intercept only model uh, is provided right here. So this is the same test result that I showed you earlier and you can see that obviously um, our model containing the full set of predictors was a significant improvement in fit over the null. When we scroll down you'll also see under parameter estimates we still have the walled chi-square test uh, results that we had before. Um, so everything is the same as it was before but over here now you'll see that we have likelihood ratio tests that are given for each of the effects within the model. So basically you'll see that kind of the p-values right here um, many of them are very similar but they're they're not exactly the same and that's reflecting the fact that we have two basic two uh, different approaches to testing those regression uh, parameters. Now there is another route that we could go to obtain our likelihood ratio test results as well as some additional information and that would be go, to go through the multinomial logistic regression route in SPSS. So all the parameter estimates are exactly the same um, but uh, we can get uh, some additional information as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will go under Analyze, go down to Regression, and then from there we will go down to Multinomial Logistics. We'll click on that, we'll move Donate over to the Dependent box. We still have the option of, of specifying a reference category, so uh, I'm going to actually specify it as first. So next up we'll click on Continue, and from there we will move our predictors over to the Covariates box. So we'll, we'll move uh, Gender ID, political interest, dogmatism, external political efficacy over to the covariates box. Um, again, if we happen to have a factor variable that was not dummy coded or that um, contained and or contained more than um, two levels, we can move it over to the factors box, but we're not going to do that in this particular demonstration. Under statistics, we have uh, a number of them already uh, uh, clicked in terms of the defaults. So we have pseudo R square. Uh, you'll see that we've got you know various model fitting information and so forth. Over here we can ask for classification table and goodness of fit. You'll see down here what's clicked are estimates and likelihood ratio tests, which you see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on classification table and goodness of fit, and then we'll click on continue and then on OK to get our output. So now you see we have um, up here we have our basic uh, chi-square likelihood ratio chi-square test. So these are the test results. This is the same test of the uh, full model against the null or intercept only model that we had before. We have a couple of additional goodness of fit tests that are presented right here. We have Pearson's chi-square um, and then the deviance uh, test of the deviance. And basically these, if they are non-significant, that these would be an indication that we have um, good model fit. Turns out in this case that Pearson's test is uh, statistically significant, whereas the test of the deviance is non-significant. So we actually have a little bit of conflicting information between those two tests. Down below we have pseudo R square, so we still have Cox and Snell and Nagelkirke, but now we also have McFadden's pseudo R square that's given as well. So when we scroll down, you'll notice that we, again, we have our parameter estimates table with our regression coefficients, standard errors, walled uh, test values, p-values, odds ratios. And so again, these are basically walled tests that are carried out to test the individual predictors, whereas up here you see we have likelihood ratio tests testing the individual predictors. So all of these results uh, mirror, the, uh, mirror those that we saw uh, previously. Uh, finally, as we scroll down, you'll see under classification um, basically the same information that we saw uh, when we ran the model through the initial route uh, with the classification table. So all of this information, um, in addition to some additional um, added information in terms of interpretation and so forth, are provided in the PowerPoint, so be sure to, to download it. And um, the last page includes some references and resources where you can read up a little bit more on logistic regression. So I appreciate you watching. If you find the video and materials uh, useful, please take the time to like the video and share it with others. And also please consider subscribing to receive information on new videos that I upload. Thanks again.